this is Nico, and today uh, I am interview the, interviewing uh, Martin Trafford. We illustrated uh, this book, Hung, Drawn, and Slaughtered. So this is a book about his artwork. Uh, he's, a, he's an illustrator, and he has uh, illustrated plenty of uh, underground horror movie DVDs and artwork, different artworks. He has worked with many famous directors like uh, Jörg Budgerite, Martin, uh, Marian Dora, um, and many others. Uh, so today we're going to talk about uh, his artwork and uh, we are also uh, launching a raffle. So we will tell you uh, all the details during the video. Thank you for watching and um, hello, Martin. How are you? Hello, I'm good, Nico. <laughs> good so to speak to you. we've been uh, doing this book together um, a couple of months ago, and it was really la last month. Uh, the book is on sale on uh, serialpleasures.com. So there's uh, uh, either the, the possibility of either having a, a sign or an unsigned copy. Uh, the signed copies, the, they come with an A5 card. So you have the choice between two cards. Uh, one card is uh, your illustration for Necromantic, right? Yep, yep. On the Cult Epics release, it's the, the, the slip cover. Series. Yes. Very, very cool artwork. I love it. Thanks. And uh, this is Marian art for Marian Dora. Yeah, there's actually two two covers on there that, that haven't yet been released as well, but uh, okay, cool. ho hopefully they'll be they'll be coming out soon. So so it's each, a bit of a each A5 uh, card is uh, signed by you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, this is the book. So um, tell us all. Um, you did a, a first version of this book. Yes, yes. So about uh, five years ago, I, I did a, a, an Indiegogo campaign um, just for pre-orders to get interested in printing printing the book. I think I printed about 200 copies, hardback mm -hmm. and soft, um, and, and sold them all. And uh, people seem to like it enough to uh, to be asking me over the years to, to collect another batch of art together. I've, I've done so much art in the last five years that I, yeah. I had it to, to release another one. Um, exactly. But I'm I'm very lazy, <laughs> 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 and uh, yeah, yeah. It wasn't until uh, um, uh, sort of you came along really that I, I decided to, to to get off my ass and, and let somebody help me with it <laughs> because that's oh. what I knew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was the, the perfect occasion to to release your your art in a, a new 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 book form and uh, to show to mm. the world uh, your latest creations um there's so so many uh, different directors you've worked with um yeah. and uh, it, there's also an interview in the book and uh, in the interview you said that the, the very first director that you you worked with was uh uh your good girl right can you tell us mm -hmm. a, a bit about that yes yeah well that was back in uh it would have been 1991 and 92 when he was still filming shram was, oh, wow. Filming. That's a long way back, yeah. Long way back, yeah, yeah. I was, I was actually at art college at the time still, um, but I was, I was a big fan of his, his work anyway. And um, I ended up tracking his home address down through various contacts in the back of underground horror magazines in the UK. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just started as a pen pal sending fan art, and he, he printed okay. a couple of my, my pieces of fan art in his books. Uh, and his advertising materials. Um, yeah. And then he said to me, you know, I'm finished finishing this movie now called Shram. I need a T-shirt design. I need a VHS sleeve for the making of Shram. Uh, and, and would I do it for him? And I, I said, of course I'll do it for you. So that was that was my first official job straight out of art college as well, was, was working for York. And, uh, yeah, we just we struck up a friendship from there. And I... It was it was kind of a campaign of harassment on my my part 
<laughs> just kept bothering him until he let me do artwork. Um, Ooh, yeah, cool. over the years I've, I've, uh, I've illustrated, I think most of the artwork, the underground artwork I've made um, for one director would, would be for Jorg in mm -hmm. various forms, DVD covers, VHS. Um, you also did the, a comic book, a necromantic comic book. I did, yeah. That that was a that was the highlight of, of my relationship with you was was writing and illustrating uh, Necromantic Three, basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So I, we came up with the story together, and I was really proud of the story. Cool. And uh, it's it's unfortunate that he'll he may never make the movie. Yeah. Um, he's yeah he's a little bit jaded by you know the piracy that he's had to suffer over the years. Mm -hmm. I think in the UK, especially Necromantic, was one of the most bootlegged VHS <laughs> ever. That's that's the way I originally saw it was was via a bootleg. Um, yeah. So yeah, he knows that as soon as he makes a film now, it's going to be online in in fifteen it's, minutes. It's really, I remember because um, actually uh, I uh, got my copy of Necromantic two through his producer, who was called. Um, Oh, Manfred. Manfred, yeah. yeah and yeah, yeah. he sent me like a, a huge, back in the days, it was 1993 or 1994, I can't remember exactly, mm. 1993 maybe. So he, he had sent me this package with like uh, the posters for Necromantic 2. There was the CD, uh, there was an audio CD. Uh, there were so many things. And uh, um, it was really cool to have all those, this merchandising directly from the, the, the crew itself. So I can imagine yeah. that being bootlegged so, so many times after that, uh, for that, that kind of, uh, investment that they had in the, the, the distribution of the movie, it must have sucked real, real bad. So. Yeah. He's uh, suffered a lot with that over the years. Yeah. Manfred's yeah. a really cool guy. I, I speak to Manfred occasionally still as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah, cool. yeah. So yeah, I noticed the picture in your uh, Gospel of Blood book. Yeah. There's a photograph of you with the posters behind you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Posters. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> so yeah, that's an anecdote I'm, I'm going to share with you uh, because we're, we're talking about that. When yeah. uh, my uh, apartment was searched by the police, uh, they saw all those horror movie posters on the walls. And uh, so there was the, the, the poster for Henry, uh, Portrait of a Serial Killer, made by uh, Joe Coleman. That's which beautiful. has become really rare uh, nowadays. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Uh, there was uh, the, the posters for Necromantic 1 and 2. And the, the, the cops, they, they paid more attention to the horror movie posters than the, they paid attention to the SNM magazines or... I, I always imagine like all your, your influences and your character, the, the way it's built is almost kind of through movie posters and DVD covers and CDs and all your favorite music. They're sort of plastered the inside of your skull. Exactly. Like, Part of your personality that's plastered yeah, on the walls. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Hmm. And, I, and I think that was part of the climate as well at the time in the early 90s was the I, I don't know about France, but in the UK, it was the whole the whole video nasty thing was still. Yes, I remember that. Uh, you know, I come from a generation when, you know, there was no internet yet. Mm -hmm. So having access to those movies was uh, actually being uh, able to trade tapes or have uh, many pen pals around the world who could actually uh send you stuff that you had yeah. not access to so it was a different era and yeah, uh, really was. it was the golden age of tape tape trading and uh, uh we come uh, from a german generation that you know when you wanted to to see this kind of uh, underground hardcore material it was an effort you you had you actually yeah, had yeah. to do something it's, it was not yeah. just speaking on a few, you know, uh, it was a, a quest, a quest yeah. for the bizarre or a quest for the, you know, for, the for, like work. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. And it was all, always cool to get, you know, uh, those, those passes from uh, independent producers and 
you yeah. know, it, it was a, a small, small community of people, and uh, um, it was an interesting uh, era. <laughs> really was, yeah. And I'm yeah. glad I lived through it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It builds us as collectors too, because we appreciate um, the um, the importance of, uh, for example, uh, uh, DVDs or VHS tapes. We appreciate that more than uh, mm. millennials, maybe. I don't know. But uh, we appreciate the object because we know the story around the object. Yeah, yeah. And and we used to be able to go to the video stores and see all exactly. these, all the artwork and the yeah. Video stores were amazing. Like they were amazing. All those yeah. really uh, rare stuff, those weird artworks on the the, the covers, and yeah. uh, it would make your imagination work a lot. You would yeah, uh, yeah. start imagining what what was going on in the movie. Sometimes the movie was really lame and. But the cover, uh, the art, the artwork itself was so so crazy that you would imagine things about the movie. So yeah, yeah, yeah that that was a wild, uh, that that was a, a very very cool time for 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 collecting uh, stuff. Yeah, it really was. I remember the first tape I got in the post. It was uh, it had the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Cannibal Holocaust. Oh yeah, two movies on one VHS tape. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was awesome. Excellent. So, can you tell us a, a little bit more about uh, I don't know um, how you actually uh, create those uh, those uh, uh, pictures, the the technical side of it? Okay. Well, um, up until about five years ago now. I, I would only use um, pen and ink and paper. Um, I, I never colored anything. All of my early work was in, in black and white, um, partly because I couldn't use color. I'd okay. gone to art college and studied color theory and paint and everything, but I just could not use color. Paint brushes didn't cooperate with me. Mm. Um, so I, I really admire people that can paint like yourself to, to control the paint and mix the colors and make it work. I can't, I can't do that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it was all sort of scratchy pen and ink. And, and in the in the old, old days when I couldn't afford graphics pens or anything, I just used to use uh, black biros. Just oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, just scratch out with black biros. Um, but it, it sort of gave the art kind of a punk feel. Yeah. Uh, like a real punk aesthetic. And, and I think yeah, that's what you're really cool. about yeah. originally as well. Um, so from, from there, I mean, I, I used to sort of pencil sketch the lines out first and then go over with the ink and then go over that with the eraser and then I'd destroy half of the ink. So I'd have yeah. to go back with the ink again. So it was a real process just to make a piece. Um, and I sort of stiff-armed going digital for a long time. I, I didn't want to do it. I felt like it was selling out because you missed that sort of uh, symbiotic relationship with the pen and the... You know, you're mixing up molecules, and, and I love that that sort of theory. But in in the end, I started drawing in the black and white on pen and ink still, and then scanning it in, and then adding color digitally. Oh, and cool. As soon as I found out how easy that was, yeah, um, I thought, well, why don't I just get a tablet and draw? So you, I had, you have a favorite uh, brand for tablets, or? Is there something that will especially works for you uh, in terms of? Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I well, I used a Wacom for a while, but I, I couldn't. There was too much disconnect between the screen and where my hand was, and okay, I, I, I couldn't get my head around that. Um, so I got an iPad. Yeah. Um, and the uh, Procreate program on the iPad. Okay. And that's, that's all I use now, pretty much. And, uh, okay, good, good. It's yeah, really yeah. Results. I've never done it myself. I never tried digital art, but uh, this is something I really admire because the uh, it, it gives a this uh, very specific look to the drawings that's uh, very neat and uh, yeah, uh, yeah I, I, and the the use of colors is is amazing. Yeah, and if you make a mistake, you can just exactly. two finger tap 
Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's great for an artist. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I have a lot of respect for, for people who actually uh, 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 use digital art and master it because uh, this is something I cannot do. Uh, so, you know. <laughs> I wouldn't say I've mastered it yet. <laughs> I've got three or four basic moves and that's it. <laughs> so uh, what who would uh, who would be your influences as an, as an artist? Uh, do you have any special uh, artist that you admire, especially admire or uh, as a kid? Yeah. Maybe, uh, I don't know. Yeah, well, it's as a kid the the main um the first inspirations i got were from the video stores and uh, and yeah. finding art, artwork of uh, a guy called graham humphreys uh, okay english writer um i don't know if you had the the covers in france he did the original evil dead video cover and oh i love this uh, i have a poster for evil dead 2. yes uh, did that. it was yeah. the necronomicon spread out is, is yeah. it him who did this I think so, and it's got the the sort of the UK take. poster, the UK poster, and it was a uh, this special format of posters that they they had over there, and yeah, it was the, the Necronomicon opened up, and there was the demons on the, each side. That's yeah. the one, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, great right posters, and he did the original Return of the Living Dead. Oh yeah, now with the punks behind the gravestone. Oh, I love this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, so he he was uh, a big influence when I was younger. I used to, I didn't actually, um, I I could do art at school, but I didn't, I didn't really do much of it um, yeah. when I was at school. Uh, it's, it's, it's more sort of sports school kind of thing, you know. If you, if yeah. you went into football, then you know right. you weren't popular. So, um, <laughs> but I, I used to go home, or you know, in the back of my workbooks, I'd have yeah. the the video magazines you used to be able to get that told you what movies were coming soon. Yeah. Um, and they'd have lots of Graham Humphrey's artwork in and I'd, I'd sit and draw, copy yeah. his style, basically. Yeah. I'd do that for hours instead of doing my actual work. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so that, yeah, that was the first. And, and then I, I went on to go to sort of art college and, you know, you learn about the masters and that. I got into um, uh, Art Nouveau and pop art. Wow. Yes. Yeah. All the sort of psychedelic yeah. artwork, mm. yeah, that that was a big influence. Sort of uh, Gustav Klimt and you know, yeah, uh, Klimt. Hook. yeah. Uh. Uh, and yeah, I guess, but I guess mainly it was commercial art that mm. I was inspired by before classical art. Okay, um, but I'm I'm interested in both. I sort of try and mix a little bit of both in my work. So yeah. I, I do think a lot of my horror work. Is a little bit peculiar in that it's quite poppy. The, yeah, the colors are a bit bright, too bright maybe for horror artwork. But mm. it's do, do the directors have special uh, like do do they tell you uh, that they want to include this or that in the poster art or is it something that's yeah. sort of entirely left to you? It it differs. Um, some some do have a very definite view of what they want. Um, mm -hmm. For example, Marion Dora, the, the cover I did for uh, his double feature, yeah. um, he, he even sketched out for me, you know, this is the design, uh, sent me colour swatches, these are the colours I want, these are the pictures I want, and this is where I want them. He has a very de definite yeah. view of where he wants things. And I imagine that's a lot like how he works when he's making a movie as well. He's He's got a very that's singular cool. view. Yeah, um, exactly. He'll let madness happen around him, but he knows... Mm. where he's channeling it to um so yeah sometimes that that'll happen and it, it can help when they've got an idea of of what they yeah. want because it saves me a lot of work having to exactly conjure something yeah um but i'd say probably 80 percent of the work i do i've got free reign on okay um, which again, you know, I, I like a bit of both really. Free reign, free reign's good because there's yeah. no wrong answer. <laughs> Whereas if someone's got a, a definite view of what they want and you don't meet their expectations, then you've got to go back to the drawing board, sort of thing. Exactly. So, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, there's so many artworks in the book that uh, they, they cover 
How many years do they cover the artworks? What, what would you say? Um, oh, the artworks are probably spanning about 20, 20, years. 20 years, roughly. Yeah, but the, the majority of it's been done over the last 11 or 12 years, I think. That's when I got more prolific. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did you notice uh, an evolution in your art uh, compared to what you used to do like 15 years ago? Or? Yeah, definitely. Yes, yeah, especially since going digital. Like yeah. you say, just a lot cleaner now. Less punk, less scratchy. Yeah. A lot of other yeah. stuff. They look, used to look like woodblock printing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, um, like the, I kept that for the for the necromantic comic. I kept that style. Yeah. Uh, the hand-drawn scratchy style because i thought that there's also cool. the basket case uh, comic yes yeah that that yeah. was great bro the basket yeah. case comic that was for the the arrow video uh, special edition yeah of basket case recently mm -hmm. um, I, i got free reign on that i got to create a little story Excellent. wow based on case, which is a film i love so that was a thrill yeah <laughs> <laughs> What what would you what would be your all time favorite uh, cult classics in terms of horror? Oh, I'm I'm a big Fulci fan. I love, oh, good. I, Fulci Fulci movies are fantastic. Yeah. Um, you can't beat the original Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. Uh, the Dead movies. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But I, I, I really like, as far as sort of extreme underground movies, mm -hmm. um, obviously the work of Jorg is, is top yeah. for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Marion Dora recently, for sure. Um, yeah. He's challenging. <laughs> um, the August underground movies. Yes. Uh, they're very full on. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but I'm, I'm lucky I've got to work like... Even some of the classic old movies like uh, Society and Basket Case, uh, yes. and house movies. I've been lucky enough to be able to create some art, some arts based on. Those movies. I'm a huge fan of Street Trash, one of my all-time favorites. Oh, I love Street Trash. Too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I was commissioned to create a new Street Trash cover, so I, that that might still yeah. happen. I don't know. Excellent, excellent. I hope it does because I love. Yeah. yeah. Is there is there like uh, sometimes uh, uh, do, would you like to to work on uh, uh, cult classics that you would revamp your way, uh, even if the distributors don't ask you that, or but just for fun? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I've, it's been so long since I've done anything just for fun, just for yeah, myself. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's strange. You just get locked into. Yeah, yeah, a routine, but uh, it, sometimes it, it feels really good to do just something for yourself. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I I got the chance to to do um, the Cannibal Holocaust and Cannibal Ferox. Yes, yes. Which kind of felt like it was for myself because I love those. Yeah. Movies. I was co commissioned to do them originally, and and I I jumped on that because I I, I love those movies. And I was really yeah. happy to do. Them. In, in the end, I think the deal fell through, so they didn't get printed, but uh, it was, <coughs> yeah, so that, that kind of feels like it was something I did for myself. Yeah, exactly. Nobody, in the end. yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So I think it's time to talk about the raffle. Uh, yep, um, yeah, we uh, have decided to organize a raffle for uh, the book, so... Um, The participants, uh, to participate to the raffle, uh, you have to buy a copy of uh, Hung, Drawn and Slaughtered uh, on www.zeropleasures.com. And um, the winner will get uh, an original artwork uh, from you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And there's, there's going to be a, a choice as well. So you get to pick which original piece you want. So I'll, I'll show I'll show the pieces. Yep. They, they all do appear in the book as well. So if you've got the book, you'll have the piece to correspond. Exactly. With. So there's this one, which was for Casper Jules' film, Our God Without a Universe. Amazing. 
And that, yeah. that was used by Black Lava for, for their release, for the T-shirts. Sure. And then we've got another Casper Jewel on uh, Your Flesh, Your Curse. This is really cool, yeah. 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 So and, and these are all Brist Bristol board paper paneling. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, we've got... Oh, cool. This, this, this was actually... It came out as Faces of Snuff. Faces uh, of Snuff, okay. They changed the title. It wasn't Snuff the Anthology in the end. Yeah, yeah. Shane Ryan anthology movie, Faces of Snuff. Wow. Uh, we got two more choices. So this one is uh, from Guy Pierce's movie uh, or Sculpting Fragments movie called The Rope Maiden. Excellent. Uh, this is an original Maiden. one which was used in the release. And then finally we've got... Uh, uh, ah, Victor Necromantic. Betty from Necromantic. Yes. Amazing. This was used in uh, the comic, Necromantic 3 comic, yep. and in the Arrow Video Limited box set as well. That was printed. Excellent. So, so you get to choose one of those. Of all, let me say it again. You have to buy a book. If you've already bought a book, you are already participating to the raffle. And we will draw the winner on May the 3rd uh, because it's uh, Damer's birthday. So <laughs> we need to, to, to pick up that date. Um, so uh, the winner will uh, be uh, chosen on May the 3rd. We will uh, 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 maybe do a live event for, for the draw. I don't know. Uh, we have not mm -hmm. decided yet. But to participate, you have to get a book, sign or unsign, on serialpleasures.com. Uh, and uh, it's starting now, uh, today, on uh, March the 21st. And uh, it's up until May the 3rd. All right. Um, so thank you for participating to that uh, very first interview for... Uh, it was my first interview also for uh, Zero Pleasures, uh, the channel. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's a, there's always a first. Uh, yeah. And thank you uh, for participating to, to that, Martin. And uh, um, uh, I'm really happy with the book, with our collaboration with the book. I'm, uh, uh, it's, a, it's an amazing book. Uh, there's uh, how many pages? There's uh, 50, I think. Yeah, about one, uh, 150 pages, all colors. So let me show you a little bit of the inside of the book, amazing artwork, you can see, there, feel free to comment. Yeah, Blood Pigs, that's, that's going to be coming out, uh, I think in a month or two, that's coming out from Black Lava Entertainment. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, and the, that's from uh, Torment, which was based on... Uh, Loosely based on John Wayne Gacy. Oh, excellent. Yeah. yeah. That's a fun movie. <laughs> and there we uh, are. Oh, and this is for uh, Sharp Knives is a, a serial killer comic that I illustrate with uh, Anthony Cotta from, from Acid Brain Productions. Excellent. So, Amazing. Yeah. We, we need to talk about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I also love uh, the Mondo Siam. Yes, yeah, for Rene Weiss. It's really an homage to all those uh, old uh, Mondo posters uh, from the 70s and 80s. Yeah. Uh, well, that, Mondo, yeah. yeah, that was all uh, Rene's idea, um, the director. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he really wanted it to, to cry back to the Jacopetti. To the, yeah, to the original yeah. uh, poster art. So, yeah, 150 pages of uh, amazing art. Get it on uh, seolpleasures.com. And thank you, uh, Martin, for uh, participating to this interview. Cheers, thank mate. You. Thanks <laughs> for making me the <laughs> Take care. Bye.